Welcome back to AM Buffalo. Look at these little faces. Hello, guys and girls. They are here, and they are actually in line to get their books. Are you all excited? Yes. What are you excited about? To get books. To get books? Oh, somebody's yelling over here. What are you excited about? To be on TV. Ah! <laughs> I love it. And to get your book, books, right? Yes. All right, cool. I love it. They are so excited to get their books, and I'm telling you, I need my two books. But before that, we are here with school social worker Cynthia. And Cynthia, thank you for joining us this morning. It is such a joy to see the young faces excited about reading. Absolutely. Um, but you have a very, very, very important job. Tell everyone what your job is. So I am a clinical social worker and a certified social worker in the building. And it is my job to work with students both in the special education and general education departments to help them develop more coping strategies. Mm -hmm. I work with kids who have some anger management issues. Children have been through a lot of different social emotional issues. Um, we've had a lot go on in our city of Buffalo and we are right in the heart in the center of it. So I work with kids to really help them learn how to self-regulate, yep. how to connect with their best self, how to teach them to get along better with peers so they could be successful in the classroom, um, as well as being here for the teachers and the community all together. Yeah. Now you said a lot uh, because uh, when, when kids come in, they have different things going going on so you have to help them unpack so can you explain ways that books help with that I'd be happy to. I have to tell you that books are such a critical part of what I do because they really help me, a grown adult who has my own capacity to think clearly and use coping strategies because I've been doing it a long time, versus little kiddos who are four, five, six years old who haven't developed those strategies yet. So books, through their illustrations, through the words they use that are on their you know age level and developmental level, give me an opportunity to speak to the child, read the books with the kiddos, help them read the books to me, yeah. right, so they're improving the reading skills as well, to let them know they are not alone. In whatever problem it is they're going through, they are not alone. There are other people dealing with divorce or separated yeah. parents or loss. Yeah. So, And so yeah. you brought up a really good point. You talked about development. Mm -hmm. And for those of us that are parents or just have little people in our life, period, and we say, uh, you can read a book sometimes, but it's not really that important. You're talking about development. Mm -hmm. Books are super important in that development. So can you give us an example of maybe someone um, or a student that you've helped? Because I know you mentioned divorce. There's a book for that, right? There are, absolutely. Books, and I, I think it gets better and better every generation. So authors and illustrators are able to really branch out and cover a huge topic of yeah. different issues that our kiddos work with. So yes, divorce, or I have one of my favorite books is called Allie All the Way, and it's about a little girl who gets very upset because her favorite crayon broke. Mm -hmm. And she didn't know how to manage the frustration from her favorite crayon being broke. So the book walks you through the different stages of going from anger and working and down-regulating back to being a state of calm. Yeah. So each page gives you a coping strategy, counting to 10, taking deep breaths, squeezing your favorite stuffed animal. Real practical things we can teach our t parents as yep. well as our teachers yep. to do with the kiddos when they are overwhelmed with big feelings. And speak to how that translates into teenage years and adulthood. I would be happy to do that. So it's really important that we give children voice, that we give them an emotional vocabulary, not only an academic one, right? So they may be feeling very frustrated, and you'll have a four-year-old say, I'm just mad. Mm -hmm. If you teach them that emotional vocabulary, give them access to books and situations that are similar to those when they become adults or young people in high school, right? We know how hard those years are. Yeah, yeah. They're like, maybe you're not angry, you're disappointed. Yep. There's a difference. Yep. I'm disappointed, I'm sad, yep. you know, that's different than angry, right? And by doing that, we create young people who grow into adults who are able to more appropriately express themselves, yep. work through conflict, work through chaos, yep. and become well-regulated, positive people. Yep. This is why every child needs to get their hands on a book. Yes. It's not just from when they're little. It, and, it's, it's and Mercedes, 
what I'd like to say too is one thing that's so important about books is when we have shy kiddos, kiddos who may have a lot going on inside but yeah. don't know how to put it out there or talk about it, books gives them this amazing vessel, yeah. right, to explore something in a positive way, right? And so it takes them kind of into another world where they can feel safe and they can feel important. Yeah. We have a lot of kids who love to read. Yeah. Their faces light up when they show you their competency in reading and it makes them feel really good. So it's important for their self-esteem. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love it. My first word that I knew I could spell was photosynthesis, and I saw it in a book somewhere, so I went around telling everybody. I love reading, I love education, and I love that everyone is getting their hands on one. We have so much more to come. Stay with us. We are at School 99 on AM Buffalo.